Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, The Management, coming to you from the land of Olin Mills and Clark's Photography, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1974's The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, starring Peter Cushing. This has David Chung, Julie Edge, and Robin Stewart. It is a departure for us as it is a kung fu horror film. Absolutely, that's exactly what it is. Yes. And uh, it is a Hammer film. It is a Hammer film. It's um, in co-production um, with Shaw Brothers Studios from Hong Kong. And you might be thinking, am I going to see Peter Cushing bust some moves? Mm, <laughs> no, no, but it's good. It's very good. And, you know, obviously, no, it's it's not your typical Dracula um, horror film. No. Uh, yes, there's Dracula, obviously, and vampires. Yes. But, yes, it is different. And, I, and like you said, it seems a little wacky, but it's actually very good. The premise seems wacky, but you're going to dig it. Absolutely. So sit back. Relax and enjoy 1974's The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires.
to disturb the sanctity of Dracula. Wretch, I do not grant favors. I do not accede to the requests of minions. Know you not Dracula commands even from the confines of this miserable place? This miserable place. Yet, you can serve me, Ka. I need your mortal coil. I need the form of your miserable carcass. I need your vile image. I need to walk this earth again. Freed from these walls. Freed from this mausoleum. I will return to your temple. In your image, Ka. I will recall the seven golden vampires as my own host. Tools of my vengeance on mankind. I will take on your mantle. Your appearance. <gasps> Your image.
The legends of ancient China have their roots in the mists of time. Some are awesome and terrifying in their implication. Some are real and have their foundation in truth. There is a doomed village somewhere in the vast center of China that becomes cursed each year at the time of the seventh moon. It cringes in fear as it listens to the half-heard cries of souls in torment and the terror strikes deep into the hearts of the inhabitants. The whispered word is vampire. And the horror is real and very close. Once in a while throughout the ages, some brave man, tortured with grief and angry frustration, will fight and conquer his own fearful dread and venture outside the walls of his village to do battle with the monsters that torment his people. Some years ago there was such a man, a poor farmer, who had lost his most treasured possession to them, his name, so they say, was Siu Tenan.
I believe the legend to be true. I believe that this is the way the farmer died, and in dying, he destroyed the seventh vampire. One of the cursed creatures that live enshrouded in an aura of fear and terror. I do not know the location of this village or even the area in which it can be found, but I know it exists. Still cursed, still doomed. For of the seven vampire creatures, six still survive. Now, my studies and research into this subject and my own confrontation with an arch vampire leave me in no doubt whatsoever as to the validity of this particular story. If vampirism exists in Eastern Europe, and I can assure you it does, there is no reason to question its existence in other parts of the world. Its foundation, its very beginnings, may have stemmed from ancient China. Now, no one knows better than you, the faculty of Chinese history at this renowned university, that many of your legends are based on truth and documented experience. Professor Van Helsing, we have heard of your research in Transylvania and the reports of your confrontation with a certain Count Dracula, an undoubted madman. Excuse me, sir. Dracula was not a madman, at least not in the accepted sense. He was the most grotesque creature the Arch Vampire, Lord of the Undead. These monsters may find sanctuary in the imagination of the peasants of Transylvania, but China has a sophistication that has flowered and bloomed over the course of more than 3,000 years. You cannot diminish that sophistication with vague tales of devil monsters and grotesque fiends. Credulous with some intelligence, sir. But I do. That is why I am here now and would like to continue my research with your help. To use your knowledge, your facilities, work with you, have access to your documents. Vampires do exist. I know they exist. I beg of you to listen to me, take me seriously. I am an outsider, I accept that. But I have experienced the horror. <laughs> the aftermath.
No one has a greater respect for Professor Van Helsing than I, Leyland. But your father is a dedicated, outspoken man, and I fear he's becoming somewhat unpopular with the university people. Oh, because of his theories on the vampire legends? Mm. Well, these are difficult times. As the British trade consul in Chungking, I have to warn compatriots to tread carefully. I'm only allowed to remain here by the grace of the local authorities. Any embarrassment could destroy all the goodwill I've built up. And when there are people like Leung Han in the city... Well, who's he, sir? A sort of Tong leader. Awful blackguard. Oh, very jolly. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, I cannot pick and choose my guests these days. Well, there must be some you did choose, sir. Hmm. Ah, yes. Mrs. Vanessa Buren, a Scandinavian lady. Her husband died about two years ago, I believe. Left her well provided for. Evidently. Those earrings must be worth a fortune. She's on a world tour, actually traveling alone. I can't say I approve. Well, I mean, dash it all, they'll want the boat next. She has mine, sir. I do wish she wasn't wearing all that jewelry. And if I were a thief, it wouldn't be the diamonds I'd covet. And there are some here who would covet both the jewels and the lady. I'll introduce you. Mrs. Byrne, may I present Mr. Leyland Van Helsing? How do you do? Delighted to meet you. You are the son of the famous Professor Van Helsing? I am so very interested in your father's work. Many people in my country have a great respect for his reputation. He'd be delighted to hear that, Mrs. Byrne, at this time. I would so much like to meet him. I'm afraid we won't be staying in Chungking much longer, but perhaps before he then leaves... Then he's here. Oh, yes, if I could meet him. I read his books about Count Dracula and his travels in Transylvania. And to meet the vampire catcher in person. In point of fact, Mrs. Byrne, my father is primarily an anthropologist. And I fear one does not catch a vampire. there. Who are you? What is it you want? My name is Xi Qing, Professor. I come to apologize for the behavior of my countrymen. Their ignorance is to be pitied and then dismissed. Ah, uh -huh. you were at the lecture. I was. And I listened most attentively to your words. Well, thank you. The truth deserves respect. You believe the legend of the seven golden vampires? Of course. Then I imagine you're the only person in Chongqing who does, Mr. Su. Forgive my intrusion into your rooms. I want to speak to you alone. Well, please, sit down. May I offer you some refreshment? Thank you. No. I understand you are soon to leave Chongqing. Yes, I shall go to Hong Kong and catch the packet boat back to Europe. Had you heard the story of the vampires before? The name of the farmer who destroyed the seventh golden vampire was Shi Tianan. The name of the village is Ping Gui. Su Tianan? Su? Uh, that is your family name? Shi Tianan was my grandfather. Pingui is my ancestral village, and the vampires still rule it. I don't think I disapprove of ladies traveling the world unaccompanied. I would say it has its hazards, Mrs. Brown. Danger and excitement are like food and drink to me. And I'm fortunate I can indulge myself. I shock you? Not at all. Come now, if I were an English gentlewoman... I grant you that might be different. I'm sure I shock our gracious host. Well, perhaps just a little. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Mm. 
Mr. Leng Hon extends his most cordial and respectful wishes and begs the honour of escorting Mrs. Burren to her lodgings and allowing her the benefit of his company and protection. Would you give Mr. Leng Hong my sincerest apologies and tell him I have already offered to escort Mrs. Burren to her home? I think he understands. Oh, yes. He understands, all right. I'll give him a shawl. You realize what you've done? You've caused Leung Hon to lose face. Here, that is an unforgivable crime. Well, in that case, sir, could I trouble you for an escort? We need your knowledge, your skill to fight the curse of Bing Gui. Well, I'll give you all the information I can. You do not understand, sir. We wish you to journey with us to Bing Gui. We need to take you back with us. We? My brothers and I. We are pledged to rid our people of the vampire curse. We must lift the terrible shadow from our village. But we cannot do this alone. An expedition into the hinterland would require a small army of bearers and guards, and quite a lot of money for equipment and so forth. I have very little, I'm afraid. Are you and your brothers rich men, Su Ching? We have nothing, sir, except our strength and our willingness. You have no need of guards with she brothers at your side. Well, now you saw and heard the reaction to my lecture at the university. Nobody believed me except you, my friend. Now, in the mountains of Transylvania, the vampiric legends are very strong. You can almost feel the terror. It has a tangible quality. But here, <laughs> perhaps even I need proof. And you will join us, if you have that proof, Professor. Oh, yes. If the expedition could be mounted, yes, I would indeed join you. Behold that. The golden medallion taken from the seventh vampire of Pingui. <laughs> for walking, don't you think? I get so tired of sitting around. I'm not a retiring English rose, Miss Van Helsing. I don't take the blushing, and I certainly don't paint the way at the first and proper suggestion, whether I come from a Chinese rope or a very proper English gentleman. A totally emancipated female. I think you might like your women more fragile, perhaps. Perhaps. Oh, dear. I am embarrassing you. <laughs> Let's change the subject. I particularly want to talk about your father. I find him totally fascinating. Oh, my God. 
，没事吧 ？Yes, thank you. Ever since you arrived in Chongqing, you and your son have been under our protection. No harm could befall you. Already, your son has witnessed the skills of my brothers, Gui the bowman and Da the axeman. They are four others, each one a master of the martial arts, ready to guard you. But one thing is certain, father: we can't stay in Chongqing. Maybe this this trip to Ping Kuei would be the answer. It would need a great deal of finance. How much? I'm sorry, ma'am. How much would this expedition cost? We will need stores and provisions. Ping Kuei is long way away. I think. Perhaps ten thousand Chinese dollars, madam. You have it. What? I'll finance the trip to this village. On one condition. And what is that? That you take me along too. I think a vampire hunt sounds exciting. Well, Mrs. Baron, it is quite out of the question. A woman couldn't possibly make such a hazardous trip. We'd be going to unknown territory, areas that are unmapped, and the countryside abounds with robbers and brigands. I know. I also have to leave Chongqing. I suspect the fate Mr. Leon Hong has in store for me is rather more colourful than what he plans for your son. Su Ching, perhaps you would explain to Mrs. Baron. The dangers are many. Yet, if you could believe that my brothers and I will be beside you every moment of every day, then I'm sure I have very little to fear. I really must protest. It won't do the slightest bit of good, Father. The lady has a will of her own. We have a sister. Her name is Mei Gui. It means、uh, as beautiful as a rose. It will be her honor to attend you. So now, all is in the hands of the gods. We should be ready to leave Chongqing by the first light of tomorrow dawn.
Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of our film. And I gotta say, um, it's very different from what we're used to seeing from Hammer. Definitely. But it's cool. It's it's very weird because it's in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes that gothic vampire yes. that we're used to from the Hammer films out of it. But that strangeness of Hong Kong makes it creepy it does. in its own way. Yeah, it does. And the vampires are creepy and weird and, and, and different. Yeah. You know, different, different than I was expecting. Oh, I agree. Yeah. And you know, you might be sitting there going, man, look at the vampires, man, got some teeth, man, <laughs> mugs look goofy. <laughs> right. Guess what? Right. See that outside in the yard. Right. You're locking the door. For real. Yeah. Praying to Jesus. <laughs> that you know it. Right. I ain't going back to China. I, no. <laughs> you know? No. No. Yeah. But uh, this was directed by Roy Ward Baker. Who had done Asylum? Um, he had done Vault of Horror. Um, he did uh, the Monster, Monster Club. Club. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and a, a lot of Todd. Hammer yeah, films. he did a lot for Hammer. Um, and the music is James Bernard. Yes. And again, you know, he too as well had done a lot of music for Hammer. Um, but he had done the original music for um, Horror of Dracula, yes. which was which was the first. Yes. And I guess as the story goes. Um, because that music is so iconic oh, now. Yeah. Um, he based that, you know, that dun dun dun. He based that off the syllables Dracula, yeah. which I always love. I thought that was just just, it's just brilliant. It is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. is. And you know, we don't just love the Hammer films because of the atmosphere, you know, um, or the cinematography or the directing. The music is just as important in yes, those films. Is. And yes, uh, I mean, is. you know, and his and his stamp uh, is, is, is a big part of that. Yes, it is. And even taking it out of its typical placement, putting it in Hong Kong, the feel is it's still there. It that is. That creepy feeling. Yeah. And like I said, the weirdness. Yeah. I dig it. And you know, there's a moment that we were talking about when you're watching this, and you know, um, you have all the other uh, martial arts scenes in yes. the whole, you know, making the trek, yes, right, to find the village. That it takes you away from the whole horror story for yes. that little bit, and I enjoy that. Yes, yeah. You almost forget that this is, you know, a vampire movie. Yes, but it's not boring. No, either. I don't think it is at all. No, uh huh. Now, also, Julie Edge was in this film, and you may recall seeing her in a James Bond film, uh, in Her Majesty's Secret Service. That's right. And prior to that, she was a penthouse pet yeah. in like 1968. Yeah, which is probably what helped her to get that role in the James Bond film in the first place. Quite likely. Yeah. And, you know, this would be the last time that um, Peter Cushing would play Van Helsing. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but I think this film is off to a good start. It is. It it's is. It's developing well. Definitely. So let's get back to The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Here we go on foot. said no harm will befall you on the journey. It was the most fantastic display. I've never seen anything like it. My brothers will die in your defense. This is our way. You should know more of the others and perhaps keep their names in some corner of your memory.
my twin brothers, the swordsmen, Song and Shan. Their blades are of burnished silver. Zhi Tao, the method one, keep up the maze. And he has the strings of ten oxen. Bao Kui, many years ago, he chose the short stepping spear and is now its master. Da, the X-Men, and Gui, the bowman, you already know them. And we must not forget Mei Gui, our little sister. May I predict that your son will not easily forget her name. And what of you, Su Xing? How did you really find me? It wasn't chance that brought you to the university, was it? You are a famous man, Professor. Oh, no. No, I'm not famous. Perhaps in academic circles, but I'm regarded as, a, as an authority in some specialized field, but no more than that. Then I put it to you, <sighs> Professor. Did I find you? Or were you sent to us? You have fought the Arch Vampire, and you are the final authority. And you will vanquish the demons. My knowledge, so far as it goes, is limited to the European Hemisphere. I had hoped to learn something of the East from the Faculty of Chinese History, but as you witnessed, the professors were not forthcoming, to say the least of it. When a time comes, when we meet the creatures face to face, you will know what to do, Professor. dealing with mortal beings. What you must understand is that they are already dead. They are cursed creatures, forever craving human blood for their very existence. They are immensely strong and possess black powers that are far-reaching. I'll fall before them, and you too will be eternally damned. Yes, yeah, they can be destroyed. Oh, yes, they can. They abhor Anything that has a holy significance. They fear the word of the Lord. In Europe, the vampire walks in dread of the crucifix. But here, it will be the image of the Lord Buddha. These are our protection. But how to destroy them? A wooden stake driven deep into the heart. Or better still, a silver shaft. Fire. What a fire. Not in Europe. In the East, perhaps, I don't know. There are many things I don't know yet. But one thing I do know. Now, this uh, golden medallion is the symbol of their undead life force. The remaining six vampires will do anything they can to retrieve it. Once it's in their hands again, they can reincarnate the seventh vampire. I know we're coming.
She's very beautiful. Hmm? What? Oh, make way. Who, he says. And she gives him such a smile. Back in my country, that is an open invitation to help with the dishes. Strange night, isn't it? Do you think they could be falling in love? Oh, they're in this desolate place. I think it is most likely. Mm. How nice. They're lucky. I'll always remember this moment, whatever happened. Are you afraid? Yes. And yet, I'm glad I'm here. Isn't that strange? It will be dark soon. We must find shelter before the sun goes down. The nights are very cold here. I'll never take another country walk as long as I live. <laughs> there are some caves up ahead. We can rest there. I have to see. 
seen a living creature for over three hours. No birds, no insects, not even a lizard. Oh, it's a godforsaken place. That's a very apt description. God forsaken. I like a bath. Lots of warm water, perfume, so... Oh, my poor feet! Uh, I could do with some sleep. About ten days' worth. I don't like it. I hate it, Professor. I mean, the atmosphere, there's something malignant here. Well, I don't think we're going to find a village in all this wilderness. But maybe they've forgotten their way back. We could be miles from where we should be. Leyland, you are a great comfort to me. I'm sorry, but I... Oh, no. We're on the right track and heading in the right direction. I'm sure of that. How do you know, Father? Instinct, perhaps? That I've been here before, feeling? You've never seen the place. Yet every detail is crystal clear. Strange, unaccountable, but it happens occasionally. You know just what's around that corner. The moment before you turn. Do you know what is around this corner? We are approaching the village of Pinque and the lair of the vampires. Well, as long as they don't come out to meet us. There will be food soon. Well, I never thought I'd be happy to sleep in the cave. We shall be safe here. Wild animals will not venture into the cave. And my brothers will keep watch throughout the night. Wild animals? We haven't seen a thing that moves or breathes for the last 20 miles. Sometimes it is the darkness that brings them out.
Beautiful porcelain kitten. Then suddenly you're a fighting tigress. It's incredible. It displeased you. Oh, it amazed me. There's three of them. There are three vampires here. Those creatures? They are their victims, the undead. They're slaves throughout the ages. My brothers cannot survive another attack, Professor. We've destroyed half their number. Three still remain. Just three demons terrorizing Ping Kuei, your ancestral village. Now, what would you have us do? Turn back. We know these creatures can die. They're not omnipotent. We'll make preparations the next time be ready for them. A chain. Remember why you came to see me in my lodging at Tonking. Don't give up now.
legend is true. <laughs> Every detail. Over the next hill is the home of my ancestors, Ping Gui. This way. We must make sure they can't sweep down the far end of this trench. We will extend it as far as we can. In a time left to us. Good. The trench and the stakes will stop them, Father. For a while, with any luck. A dismal place. I think Mrs. Barron quite likes it, you know. No, thank you. <laughs> Romance flourishes in the strangest places. Doesn't it? Demons of hell, watch over these thy disciples. ourselves to your service and your commands.
Helsing, across the globe, even to this very place do you plague me. Dracula. <laughs> Count Dracula. I knew it. I knew you had to be here. A curse on you and your house. You show yourself. Or must you hide behind the image of another man? Is the mighty Dracula too frightened to reveal his face to me? I am Dracula, Lord of Darkness, Master of the Vampires, Prince of the Undead, Ruler of the Damned! Prove it. Right. Van Helsing, you will once more see my face before you die.
Well, we've reached the conclusion of the legend of the seven golden vampires. And I've got to say, I really enjoy this film. But the first thing that I noticed that I thought was kind of spooky was the way that the uh, vampires kind of hopped. You know, and I'm so glad that they put this in here. Mm -hmm. um, this is, um, you know, Chinese legend of the vampires um, is the, uh, they're called the Jian Shi, and they're called the Hopping Vampires. And I thought that was really cool it's that they creepy. put that in here. It is it's creepy. creepy. Yeah. Now, you know, sitting at home, you might be like, man, that's, that's funny. Guess what? You see three or four of them out in your driveway? <laughs> it ain't going to be what funny you for long. To, you would, <laughs> right. Right. You'd be like, oh, calling the cops. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, the uh, other thing about this film was, you know, Christopher Lee did not play Dracula. No. No, that's right. That's that right. That was John Forbes Robertson. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of surprised that they didn't have a bigger name. Exactly. Playing Dracula. Exactly. And you know, uh, like we had said in the very beginning, when you first see him from afar, it kind of looks like it's going to be Christopher Lee. Yes. You know? Yes. But, of course, it's not. No. But the unfortunate thing that, you know, they did him dirty. Yeah, well, um, they overdubbed his voice. And, you yeah. know, of course, you know, they didn't tell him. <laughs> no. He went no. to go see the film and was like, what? <laughs> he was mad. He had a right to be. Because, uh, you know, they didn't tell him. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Be like, man, baby, come check out this film I'm in. Then you hear this other voice. Yeah. That's not you. You'd be like, that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not you. <laughs> well, you know, I guess, of course, they did offer the role to Christopher Lee. And uh, I guess uh, when he read the script, um, he was he was out. Yeah, I you know? think he was done. He had played um, Dracula enough. I mean, mm -hmm. even in the you know um, films before this, you know, um, you know, Dracula, nineteen seventy two A.D. Yes, the Satanic Rites. Um, he pretty much had it. He, he really didn't have a lot of speaking roles and didn't really want to. I think he was just fed up with playing the role at that yes. point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we noticed was you know David Chang pretty much was the hero of this film. Absolutely. You know Van Helsing. You know. He is, you know, the vampire killer. Right. But David Chang, yeah. he was the hero. He was. Man. Yeah, he was. He was. And he gets killed. Yes. You know? Well, he sacrificed himself after Julie Edge got bit. Yeah. And I was not expecting that I at all. Not I wasn't either. expecting either one of them. No. You know? I to was kind of hoping off. they would make it, you know? I was too. I was too. Because you know what? I really enjoyed him and his character in this movie. Yes. Through the whole movie. I really did. Now, the other character that we enjoyed was Van Helsing's son. Yeah. Leland. Yeah, yeah. Leland was bold, man. I mean, think about it. You know, he, was, he had designs on their sister. Which is more brave than anything else. I mean, she didn't have one bad brother. She had seven. And she was bad herself. She, I don't know about dating a woman... Uh, that can whoop me. And I mean whoop me. Whoop like, you. You know, make me cry. Whoop bring, you. Bring me to tears. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. And she was extremely cute, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not that cute. <laughs> you know? You'd have to wait till she left and the door shut and then you'd be like, I'll tell you what. <laughs> what I really think. Even about. then, I don't think because I ain't going that far. I, you'd be I under your, your breath. <laughs> In the back of my mind. While, in the back of your mind. While I'm washing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, for sure. Because she could fight. She oh, could yeah. fight. Yeah. Yeah, she'd come home. <laughs> and clothes not be ironed. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, what do you mean me do them? I mean, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. They're almost you done. You misheard me. They're almost done, baby. They're almost done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So, he was extremely brave. Oh, completely. Extremely brave. And he couldn't fight. <laughs> He tried. He tried. Yeah, he tried. I give him credit. He mm -hmm. gets points. Mm -hmm. He rolled around in the dirt. He did. He did. He was always in the scuffle. Mm. But he made it. He did make it. Yeah. Um, eh, there's something to be said for that. There is. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. But this film, once again, is a departure. It is. It is. But I think a very interesting departure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, really, um, those martial arts films... We're really getting big, you know. I mean, you know, Bruce Lee was in the states, and you know, I mean, you know, I mean, Enter the Dragon, and so I think, um, you know, Hammer at that point really was, they weren't at their peak, right? You know, um, there's probably financial trouble, yes. um, you know, starting at that point, so they were really, you know, trying to find um, 
movies that people would be drawn to. Yeah. Although, unfortunately, you know, this was a flop at the box office, you know? Yeah. And yes, you know, it's definitely under the radar, but I enjoyed a lot more than um, a lot of the Dracula movies that they had done in the 70s. Yes, I agree. And I mean, I don't blame them for trying to capitalize on a popular trend at the time. No, not at all. Because it holds up. It does. Yeah. It I does. like Kung Fu films. So do I. And you do too. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again from the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, good night. Good night.